The February 2020 Brookhaven Borough Council Workshop meeting will now come to order. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. A reminder that video and audio recording of this meeting may be uploaded to the internet. And one note, Council met in executive session on Tuesday, February 18, 2020, 6.30 p.m. to 8 p.m. in the Council Room. The purpose was to meet with Roseanne McGrath regarding personnel, policy, and procedures related to the front office and inspector's office. Council will also meet in executive session immediately following tonight's meeting. The topic, again, is a personnel matter. Anyone from public discussion? No? Mr. Wills? Vincent? Uh, well, oh. Yeah. Oh, I thought that was Vincent. Uh, um, I guess this is my first meeting, so I, I can come up. Uh, you sure can come right sure, up? Sure, come on up. up. <clears throat> Just state your name and address, please. I'm uh, Mr. David and Heather Mosby, 4935 Chester Creek Road. Um, we're here to try to get a letter of interest for a uh, voluntary buyout program. Uh, so we keep talking for each other. Sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. <laughs> Hi, Council. Uh, very nice to meet you guys. Um, Mr. David and Heather Mosley, 4935 Chester Creek Road. And uh, so we, um, I don't know if you guys are aware of that property, but it's in, located in a flood zone and it's pretty bad. So um, we've been put in a severe repetitive loss category with FEMA and it's like $9,600 a year for our flood insurance. So. We've tried to sell the home several times. Um, you know, it's just unaffordable for people to buy it. So, kind of stuck in a bad uh, position, but we're trying to get uh, FEMA to buy us out under a voluntary flood uh, buyout program. <clears throat> and what we need from uh, the, the Brookhaven Borough is, is a letter of interest. And uh, that's what we're trying to uh, see if we can get that accomplished. Mr. Mosley, I think I've had the pleasure of speaking with you last week uh, concerning this particular issue. and. Uh, my sense is that uh, Borough Council will, in fact, be receptive uh, to your request, and I would expect this to be an agenda item for the uh, March monthly meeting, so I suspect uh, this will be placed for an affirmative vote of Borough Council next Monday, right here in this room at 7 o'clock p.m., and then that will initiate or begin uh, the process uh, uh, I can't, uh, quite frankly, estimate for you how long this process uh, may take, but... Uh, I believe it's a year or two they said the process uh, would take, so, you know, it takes a little while, but that's okay. No. Patience sometimes is the watchword when you're dealing with the federal government, yes. No doubt about that. Trust me, I got a lot of experience with that, so... But thank you very much, and um, I take it you are Mr. Heller? Terry? That's me, yes. Oh, okay. I thought you were looking at Jay. Okay, and I think I spoke to you. I spoke to you last week, okay. yes. Mm -hmm. okay. I so, filled most of council in on it, with the exception of one member of council, and we'll talk about it during the week. Okay. And we um, will vote on it next week. And I propose that when we level the house and make it a park for Brookhaven, we call it Mosley Manor Park. We can, like that. <laughs> well, that, that would be a whole other vote. <laughs> but, um, Mr. Catania, do you want to explain to the public real quick exactly how it works? Yeah, this is a, it's a federal program that is set exactly for Mr. Moses' situation, houses that have repetitive flood losses. And uh, the program is a matching grant program, and uh, it's 80% of the federal money, 20% local money. Uh, that local money doesn't necessarily mean it's borough funds that have to be put towards this acquisition of the property and demolition and site clearance. It, it appears that the state, the state, the Pennsylvania Emergency Management Agency will, will provide that 20% match. Um, the what the request is is to for the borough to submit this letter of interest to Pima slash FEMA uh, to initiate the process. And once that letter of interest is submitted, then a meeting is scheduled with the Pima, the state representative on, on the grant program. And at that time, we'll, we'll get a lot of more information and be able to, to move to the next step and uh, advise council of, of what that may be. So he, he has a major problem with flooding. FEMA pays 80% of the co of fair market value. 20% 20, uh, 20 comes from the state to buy out Mr. Mosley. They also remove the house. They remove everything. 
and uh, turn it over to the borough as green space, correct? That's what it, yes. Without, with no cost to the borough? In this case? In this case. Okay, all right. Easy enough. Okay. All right. Okay, thank you guys very much. And feel free to come up next Monday. That's the March meeting. Okay. We'll vote on it. Mr. Heller, I missed the address. What was the address? What's the address? 4935. 4935 Creek Road. Okay, thank you. Yep, right next to the swim club. Yep. Mm -hmm. Anyone else from public discussion? Mr. Wills? Thank you, Mr. President, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. First item on my agenda concerns 123 East Brookhaven Road. Uh, Judge Kelly Echo of the Delaware County Court of Common Pleas issued an order dated January 28th, 2020, mandating the property owner to remove all trash, debris, and or junk from the property within 20 days, and in default thereof, authorizing the bird to enter upon the property and abate the nuisance, and further authorizing the bird to file a municipal lien against the property owner for all cost it may incur therewith. To date, the property owner has not abated the nuisance. However, the property is scheduled for sale and settlement during the second week of March I believe the date is March 11th. The new prospective property owner has given certain assurances, and this is a prospective owner that does in fact operate a clean out company, uh, that the nuisance will be promptly abated upon acquiring title thereto. I have received a quote from ADU Property Services to abate the nuisance for the sum of $6,250. In light of the high cost, I suggest the bird defer retaining ADU services at this time and permitting the new prospective property owner to abate the nuisance upon settlement. If the new owner fails to do so, the borough may then authorize ADU services to enter upon the property, abate the nuisance, and then, of course, the borough will file the appropriate municipal liens to recoup the cost that may incur therewith. Second item on my agenda concerns Carmen's. <clears throat> Again, at 4209-4313 Edgemont Avenue. Again, this is a commercial property which has been blighted for many years. The conservator appointed by the court under the Abandoned and Blighted Property Conservation Act filed a motion with the court on February the 12th, 2020, to order the sale of the property. Said motion is scheduled for a hearing on March the 2nd, next Monday, for which I will be in attendance to ensure that all fees and costs incurred by the borough throughout this process are considered when the court defines the terms and conditions of said sale especially as it relates to the price of said sale. <laughs> Third item concerns 3607 Victor Avenue. Again, this is a residential property where the owner has accumulated a large amount of <coughs> trash, debris, primarily located in the rear yard of the property. On February 10th, 2020, I filed on behalf of the borough a complaint in equity and petition for preliminary injunction against the property owner in the Delaware County Court of Common Pleas. The court, however, will not schedule a hearing on the borough's petition for preliminary injunction until it affects personal service of the legal documents upon the property owner. I have commissioned the Pennsylvania State Police or State Constable to affect service upon the property owner, uh, all to no avail. He has visited the property on no less than 10 occasions to serve the legal documents, all unsuccessful. The zoning officer, who is also present uh, this evening, as well as the police department, have likewise attempted to effect service on the property owner, all unsuccessful. Assuming the borough's efforts do not bear fruit, I will be filing with the court later this week a petition requesting alternate service of process by simply taping or affixing 
to the front door of the property owner the legal documents. Fourth item on my agenda concerns the sewage treatment plan operation and maintenance, the contract extension with Miller Environmental of Reading, Pennsylvania for the year 2020 in the bid amount of $71,459.26 has been successfully executed between the Burr and Miller Environmental and an original contract document is on file with the borough's administrative offices. Fifth concerns human resources consultant Roseanne McGrath. I have reviewed a proposal submitted by Ms. McGrath to conduct an analysis and an assessment of the various administrative positions within the borough. Ms. McGrath and the borough have had a positive working relationship in the recent past during which Ms. McGrath assisted Borough Council with its Chief of Police Recruitment and Search in 2019. <clears throat> if it is the pleasure of Borough Council, an affirmative motion, a motion may be passed by Council at its March 2nd meeting to retain the professional services of Ms. McGrath, consistent with and pursuant to <clears throat> parameters outlined in her written proposal to Council President Heller dated February 21st, 2020. That is my report, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Wills. Mr. Mr. President, could I ask Mr. Wills a question? Sure. Uh, on the Victor Avenue property. Yes, sir. Uh, I know the constable has been there 10 different times. Yes. Uh, the zoning officer has been there. Police have been there. Chief Curtin, I think, spoke to you today. They see the car in the driveway. They knock on the door and nothing happens. So by going to the court and getting whatever documents you need to get and taping them on the door, that still doesn't mean she's going to take any action. But what would happen then? Yeah, absolutely not. Again, we have to affect service. Generally, when one files a petition for a preliminary injunction, the court generally won't schedule a hearing until due process. And due process means that the person gets official notice of the proposed action. In this case, uh, we're going to make the argument, I think it's a very compelling one, that she is willfully... Uh, failing to avail herself of service of process, and therefore will follow what we call motion for alternate service, where we simply affix, tape the legal documents to the front door, and that effectively serves as service of process. And then the court will schedule a motion for our preliminary injunction, and that motion is asking the court to immediately order that the property owner abate the nuisance and remove all the drunk, junk, trash, and debris that is currently throughout the backyard of that property. Failing to do so as a backup plan, again, we are requesting permission to enter upon the property and remove the various junk materials and trash that's strewn throughout the rear of the property. And then we would, of course, ask the court for legal fees and court costs, as well as permission to lien the property for the cost that we're gonna to have to incur by hiring a third party contractor to go on the property and abate the nuisance. And I got, again, I realize uh, the neighbors, quite frankly, are at their, yeah. their wits right. end and uh, they've been very, very patient and- So uh, that is plan B and C. That is uh, absolutely, sir. Okay. Is that it? Mayor's report? I have nothing this evening. <clears throat> Mr. Vasquez. All right. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, I hope everybody got a chance to enjoy the uh, wonderful day today outside. Uh, for the Public Works report, we had uh, two sewer calls, one at three, uh, 3755 Susan Lane. The problem was uh, with the homeowner, not on the Barrow's end. The second one was with uh, 224 Swiftwater Lane. They plunged the homeowner's lateral till the uh, block cleared and uh, they're good to go now as of this point. Uh, there was a sinkhole found at four, 414 Edwards. They f it was filled with stone as a temporary fix for right now. It's another sinkhole that was found at uh, 246 Morris. Um, we have two, one stormwater system was dyed, dye tested at Melvin and Gray. There was another dye test at they die tested the gutters at the Faith Hill or Faith Community Church on Edgemont Ave. 
Uh, we had some routine cleaning through the stormwater in zones two and three. They televised some lines on Patton and stormwater on Coburn. The visual inspection of the storm culvert on uh, White Lee Road, uh, we had findings reported to Mr. Catania. <clears throat> there was an inspection at the uh, retention basins at the walking trail. One pipe was blocked and the berm is starting to wash away. We gotta figure out what we're gonna do with that. Uh, there is, I'm sorry, uh, they, were, they, they had met with DEP about the air quality at the sewer plant per the complaint that was uh, filed. DEP was satisfied and there was no issues coming from the plant. Mm -mm. Uh, we have upgraded the sewer plant lighting to LED. Uh, the parks were, we got a lot of things going on right now. Uh, Public Works met with the rec committee, the engineer, and diversified lighting company at Memorial in Sampson. I'll let you finish the rest of that. No, not that. You, can, you can fill in everybody on the details. Uh, they also met about the backstop at Memorial. Uh, got some pricing and other things for the scoreboard at Sampson. Again, you can in include the details. <laughs> uh, the dugout benches on field four at Memorial Park were inspected. Some uh, updating and fixing will be done to those. This work will be done before, hopefully this week or the next week, weather pending. Uh, let's see, we added some raised security chain and added reflectors at Memorial Park. We also, had 15 street signs that were added or replaced. Uh, we had some lights replaced in the Barrow Hall gym. Uh, they assisted Harry with that, with the uh, lift that we rented. Uh, we replaced some office lights in the garage with LEDs to be a little bit more efficient. 30 potholes were filled at this time. So far, our year to date is two tons, uh, 34, PA one call tickets were answered. Uh, Public Works also met with emergency management and updated their resources in emergency management plan. There was a tree leaning at two, 212 Maple Ave. Uh, the complaint was possibly that that tree was on Barrow property. It is not. Uh, there was a bunch of debris at the uh, north side of Clearwater Lane. That was all cleaned up. Uh, taking advantage of the nice weather, Public Works cleaned out some of the mulch beds. They've replaced a missing light around the one tree, and or I should say that's on order. We don't have one. And uh, year to date, we have no injuries or accidents with Public Works. And as for zoning, uh, we do not have a meeting as of yet. Hopefully, Harold stirs the pot and finds something for us soon. The people stir. <laughs> I deny. Also, uh, I want to try and move forward with the budget committee and maybe get some other council member, members involved and, I don't know, Jay, uh, maybe some public members as well. I'm not sure what the legal standpoint on that would be. But I want to try and get the ball rolling on yes. this. Something we can look at? Council would have to agree to that part of it. Yes. Sure. And uh, that is my report. Do you have anything on the lift that Public Works was asking about? Yes, uh, we're looking at... Take your time, I know it's in your email. We are looking at uh, possibly acquiring a lift to assist in the barrow with street lights, the banners, tree grooming, and uh, you know, uh, just like the lift that we rented to replace some lights in the in the gymnasium. A tow behind lift, not a yes, not a bucket truck. This isn't a bucket truck or anything. Somewhere in the cost range of what twenty seven to thirty five thousand. Uh, I think the Take. they got three quotes just to get an idea. They they've used it the past three weeks r rather heavily. They could have used it, I should say. The lowest pr uh, they got three quotes as of right now. The lowest price is 17 and the highest is 30. 
thirty thousand was the highest. Yes. And taking, I took the banners out of of the equation because I, I didn't want my project being. I, I didn't. I didn't want to 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 bill it as a a device we would need for, or a piece of equipment we would need for the banners. But uh, I, I definitely think we, we have use a pretty. It I definitely think we could use it to trim and maintain the sure. row, you know, pretty. At 30,000, we look at an ROI of four years, not including the banner maintenance in it. So that's not bad at all. No, With I... the banners, you're looking more at two years. Because they cost a fortune to maintain if, if you're paying an electrician. Yes. Or, yeah. or a contractor, I should say. And we're, that, we're, that, we're, that, that we're being. We're spending $130 to replace a banner. That's pretty, it's ridiculous. That being said, I think uh, we definitely could utilize, you know, we can find more work for this other than what sure. they've been doing in Red. At Eaton Park alone, yeah. And it's something we should we could consider. And um, I don't know, how, how much time are they looking at? What sort of time frame are they, they want? Uh, he, he necessarily didn't give me a time frame on how quick they're trying to move. I know some of the uh, people that they were looking at purchasing this from have 0% interest offers. So that, there might be another special coming up on that. Sure, five years, seven years. And again, the ROI on it would be really short considering the amount of money we spent on contractors that this uh, piece of equipment would replace. So we'll, we'll discuss it with council during the week and maybe we can uh, see what the feedback is and move on it. Yeah, so again, this is a tow behind unit, you know, and it's not a, you know, it's not a bucket truck or anything. And then it's powered supply to the bat. It, there's two that are battery powered and there's another one that was gas so then once it's disconnected from the trailer it can move to wherever it needs and uh you know self-leveling and then at the same time if we do wind up purchasing the machine we have to make sure everybody's trained on it to use it safely mm -hmm. and that way we don't have any incidents can we lease to own it, or is it you have to buy all one lump sum? No, no, they have. Uh, they have they have payment plans. Packages. Yeah. yeah. Five years. I think they go up to seven years. But um, and we'll have to look at look and see what maintenance on the piece of equipment we must do. You know, the item is included not in budget. our ROI calculation. This item was not in the 2020 budget. You realize that? Sure. And we don't really go out and pay things on the installment plan. We usually pay cash when we buy something because we put it in the budget ahead of time okay. so we can do that and well, save we're, money. We're also interest. saving $110,000 in And I would like to know, is it co-stars or what is it? I mean, how are you getting it? So they just reached out? I would out. like you to really give my department, you know, information when you're doing this because I have no idea what you're even talking about. Well, this is why we're talking about it right now. This is why we're bringing it up at the well, workshop so we can discuss it during the, I just said I, I, we're going to discuss, discuss it with you during the week. That's why we have workshops. No, we usually give the you information ahead of time. You don't have to steel cage match over it. It's, it's okay. <laughs> No, it's not okay. Sure, it I is. think it's very disrespectful. It's not even. It's, it's yeah, well, it is, because the budget's in place. The streets no reaper with no one knowing is disrespectful. This well, yeah. is hardly disrespectful. Well, no, you knew about it before it went in, and it didn't go in the budget. Okay, it was exploratory. But this is why we bring this item up during this the work. Isn't exploratory. He wants to buy. Are, are we asking for a vote? We didn't this ask is, for a vote. I didn't say a vote. I'm just saying I'd like to get information. A purchase so that a purchase that will save us money. No, that's. One person's opinion. Okay, moving along. I think it's more than one person's opinion, Mrs. Soaky, but all right, is that the end of your report, Mr. Vasquez? Thank you very much. Yes, I that am. That would give us Thank Mrs. Sawicki's report. Uh, you do have the bills that are going out this week. I will have a report at the next week's meeting. Thank you. Well, it got pretty quiet. <laughs> what are we waiting on? She's done. She's done. Oh, okay. Oh, I said, sorry. I'm sorry. I said, She's done with you. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. I didn't realize. I did not hear you. Ms. Leslie. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, recycling. We will have both shredding and electronics events in 2020. The first one is March 28th from 9 a.m. until 12 noon over at Coburn. Oh. And it's for both. A lot of people didn't know that we put the electronics back in and they had found a vendor for us um, back in That's December, right. I think it was. So I want to make sure it's updated, it's, please. It already is. Thank you. That'll be very helpful. Thanks. Yes. And it's so much easier over it at is. Coburn. It actually the is. The traffic flow when it we is. did it um, last October. It was better. I agree. 
Uh, and then we're going to have a police committee meeting is scheduled for Tuesday, March 4th at 530. And that's the end of my report. Mr. Pappas. Wednesday. Uh, no report at this time. Huh? Is it Wednesday? Or Tuesday? Mrs. Heller. Oh, Wednesday it is. Uh, the personnel committee met on Wednesday. 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 Personnel committee met on Wednesday, February 12th. Uh, Business Association is actually having a meeting this Wednesday, February 26th at 8 a.m. in the community room. So any businesses that want to partake, please come up. Uh, holiday parade did not meet in February. Our next meeting is March the 11th. Yes, March the 11th at 7 o'clock here. Um, Technology Committee um, met on Thursday the 13th. Donna, I'm going to let you just provide update on the code. Yeah, I don't have much, but sure. Okay. Um, for the rec board, uh, Hector did fill in some of the things. We're moving along between softball and baseball. Softball, we are moving forward with the scoreboard. Thanks to Public Works, we're able to save some funding on getting additional materials to actually install the, um, the actual scoreboard. Um, as well as with softball, on Friday, this coming Friday, we are going to acquire four 40-foot poles from Montgomery County uh, Prison. We are actually going to have them delivered to the uh, maintenance shop here for future um, projects, um, but they are free. And they would originally cost about $40,000 because each pole is $10,000. So however we utilize that, either for lights, for the baseball, softball field, or even one of the parks, it's a win-win situation <coughs> for us. Uh, as well for, uh, you know, softball, we were talking about there was um, Sean Met, Sean Cross from Diversified Med, as well as Mr. Contanius, in reference to the lights, as well as the backstop. We're moving very quickly with that. Hopefully, we'll have uh, quotes by the end of this week, Jenna, so that we'll know what the cost is going to be for the backstop. That was one of the things that we discussed earlier in the year that they're supposed to be getting. So. Uh, other than that, I don't think I have anything else to report. Mrs. Fuchs. Thank you, Mr. President. The Ordinance Committee did meet last <laughs> Thursday to discuss the Animal Control Ordinance. We do have some changes. Um, thanks, Mr. Dykes, for bringing it to my attention. Um, once we get the document revised, I'll make sure that Council gets a copy of it and we'll be discussing it next month. Um, Dollar Magic, Business Revitalization News, Dollar Magic will be in the old Payless storefront. Um, we have some information that just came in today regarding that. Uh, you, you sure can. Uh, we spoke <laughs> to them uh, yesterday, the day before. They told me. Harold, pull your mic in if you don't mind. I can't hear. I'm sorry. I think they told me Thursday they would open. That's this coming Thursday that they should be opening up. And then I also heard uh, March 1st, but uh, the gentleman working there told me it would be open Thursday. So we'll see. I don't know whether it will be. Okay. I, as she was referring to, I just got the sign printed out and so I can okay that for him. Okay. Okay, thank you. Right. Uh, tech committee news. The tech committee um, is getting information on a software prog program called eCode, which will electronically list all of the borough codes and zoning. Um, I've been emailing a gentleman back and forth regarding uh, information on this program and I'm requesting a meeting with him, so we'll have it here. Um, it'll be during the weeknight, and I'll get a couple council members to come to the meeting with me to get some information. I'm very curious on pricing. I have no idea how much this is going to cost, so um, that's going to be the, the tell-all for this software. Um, website news. So it was determined that some of the minutes were missing from the website due to the conversion. So I'm waiting for Mary to send me some minutes and. Um, Joan graciously sent me some workshop minutes, so I'll get those um, uploaded on the website, and then probably by the end of the week, we'll get the remainder of the minutes posted. Rec board news. Um, first of all, visit our website for youth sports sign-up information. Saturday, February 29th, is the softball beef and beverage at the Borough Hall Gym from 6 to 10 p.m., $25 a person, $40 a couple. Saturday, March 7th, is painting with a twist for 55 and older at the Borough Hall Community Room from 1 to 3. Sunday, April 5th, is our egg hunt and pictures with the Easter Bunny. Pictures are 12, 
The hunt is at 1 p.m. Um, Sign-ups will be the month of March during normal business hours from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m., Monday through Friday. And I'm sure there'll be two evening sign-ups, and they're probably going to be when we have our meetings here. Um, just makes better sense to do it that way. And we've done that numerous times in the past. Um, that would be March 2nd and March 23rd. The egg stuffing, I believe that's the Tuesday prior to the egg hunt? Yeah. Okay. Um, so that would be March 31st. Saturday, April 18th, is our opening day parade. Teams will line up at Faith Community Church at 8 a.m., and the parade begins at 9. Um, I believe they're collecting canned goods for the parade this year as well. Concert in the Park series. So we have uh, some dates and times. They're tentative, but I'd like to start informing the public of them. May 28th at 6.30, June 20th at 5 p.m., July 15th at 6.30 p.m., August 19th at 6.30 p.m., September 19th at 5 p.m., and October 17th from noon to, till 8. And that is our battle of the bands and food truck events. So that will be a really fun day. Stay tuned for more details to be posted on our website and our Facebook page. And also, there will be um, a psychic event. I don't have those details, but there, I think it'll be if I had to guess the beginning of the summer, but I'm not exactly sure. As soon as I know, we'll make sure we get it posted. Community news, uh, Providence Animal Center will be here on May 19th for the CHIP vaccination clinic, and next month I'll create the flyers and get them in the back of the room. That's all my report. Thank you, Mr. Catania. Thank you. I just have a couple things that'll be for council consideration at the next meeting. Uh, on the street and send sewer maintenance, there's a few um, outstanding projects, and it's a long list, but I'm just slowly getting and checked off the list. So the first one is uh, Edgemont Avenue Sanitary Square that runs behind the KFC and Taco Bell. This was video inspected by the Public Works Department. There's one section of pipe that's in bad condition and needs to be replaced. Uh, that costs, we're estimating about $25,000. And I'll tell you, that, I think that's high, but it's, it's there because we're working in, in the parking lot of the KFC in close proximity to the petroleum pipeline that's running through there. So we don't really know what we're gonna come across until we, we get there. So I'm gonna ask council for consider authorizing that repair next week. The sewer treatment plant, there's a water leak. There's water running out of the driveway that needs to be repaired. So that's another uh, project that we can check off the list if council so approves next week. Uh, 3533 Victor Avenue. This was a storm sewer repair that was started. It was never finished because they found water flowing um, in the, in the uh, excavation. They believed it to be a leak from the, from the Chester Water Authority. Uh, Chester Water Authority conducted a leak detection and, and indicates that there's no evidence of, of a leak. They tested for chlorine and fluoride, which is in Chester Water, and didn't find any. So I'm just going to ask that we um, authorize that repair to be finished. Uh, under the road salt contract, we currently put an RFP out each year. Uh, Janice had provided information maybe last month about a, a CoStars program. Uh, when I check it out, it looks like the CoStars is about 50 cents cheaper than what we're currently paying. Uh, in order to qualify for the 2020-2021 winter season, we need to put our name in the hat by March 15th. So I'm going to ask for authorization to register for the CoStars uh, road salt contract for next, uh, next winter. Uh, and finally, we talked about this already, but on my, it will be also a request to uh, authorize the submission of the letter of interest for the, the FEMA-funded residential property volunteer buyout for that 4935 Chester Creek Road. And that's all I have. Thank you. I'll have a full report next week. Mr. Leslie, you have anything? A couple things pending. Coco's Pizza is still pending. Dollar Magic, they're looking late next week. That's what I was told. I was there Thursday. And Elwyn is still pending over there. That's it for right now. Waiting for Brookhaven Estates whenever they break ground. All right, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Hampton? Uh, 186 calls last month. So far, 100 as of today. And uh, the other thing I would like, Mr. Catania to come across the street from my house. All of a sudden, the street is sinking. Looks like it's down quite a bit on the, we don't have a curb on that side, and that street has really all of a sudden sunk. And uh, uh, years ago, that was strictly an open ditch until it got filled in. It was put in under roofs about its time. And, uh, uh, Mr. Jordan filled it in and did the street 10 years ago. But now it has a great big sink in there, and I don't want somebody maybe going down. I don't know what it is. But it, it's just kind of developed here in the past couple okay. of days. So this is your official request? And you, 
Thank you, Martin. I guess this is your request for us to look at it. Yeah, I'd like to All right. that. <clears throat> Chuck, you got that? Yeah. Thank you. Nothing else on my agenda. That's it. Like I said, outside of the sign that I just got tonight uh, that you put on my desk. Right. It's the night the gentleman brought it in, and I'll review that tomorrow and write up as uh, okay. I already knew what his uh, calculations were, but I told him I needed designs, pictures. Okay, so everything should be all right. All right, thanks, okay. Harold. Chief Montel, do you have anything? Uh, just the, all the AEDs and the ballparks and the borough hall have all been updated. Uh, the highway department has them back and then installed them. Okay. All right. Thank you. Anyone from public discussion? I had a quick comment, please. Go ahead. Um, I had a senior approach me over the weekend to talk about our public safety officers and how thankful she was that you, Chief, and Joe Bynum came to her house and checked her smoke detectors and made sure that our home is safe. She is a widow widower. She greatly appreciates your service, so she wanted me to relay her thanks to you. <laughs> One and the same, he's not the third person. <laughs> <laughs> no one from public? I, I had like to ask Mr. Wills if you get okay to post that front door, maybe put one on her windshield too. We let you know so I can take pictures, so I'll have evidence for you that it was posted. Yes. Okay, because you know I take pictures of everything. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll be doing the filing this week. Harold, we've, yeah. we've seen some of your pictures, Harold. <laughs> we've seen some of your pictures. You want to see 123, how many I have? <laughs> I wouldn't put them on the windshield, though, Harold. <laughs> And Harold, that 123 Brookhaven, that is scheduled March 11th. March 11th. And the new property owner has assured you that he will have it cleaned up in a couple of days. Uh, well, we have a ADU services in the background in case. Yeah, as uh, long as there's no problem over there trying to get the gentleman out of there. <laughs> no one from public discussion? I, I got one more thing to add. All right. Uh, <laughs> The Public Works also met with uh, Sue of America. Sorry, I got distracted. Okay. Um, about the jet truck that they have. They're looking at an updated one to use actually a heating element for the water instead of trying to fight grease with cold water. Usually helps a little bit with hot water. We're not wasting as much time with each blockage. So uh, they met, and met with them. That is in the budget. And that is all. Thank you. I have one thing, too. <laughs> Say again? I have one more thing. You guys don't want us to leave tonight. I just wanted to thank Town Watch for amazing spaghetti dinner that was held on Sunday, uh, February 9th, and I look forward to next year's. So thanks, Lynn. Thank you, Town Watch, for it. George, Mayor Denise, you want to tackle <laughs> Are you sure? I'm, I'm okay. Positive. Tom, you don't want to come up to the podium? Last chance. All right, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll make the motion. Second. Sure, second.